Hi, everyone. Welcome to Azure Cosmos DB Conf. I'm Justine Kochi, and I'm a PM on the Cosmos DB team. I focus on programmability, and today we're going to be talking about avoiding common pitfalls when writing queries with the API for NoSQL. So first, we should decide when are queries actually useful? I have a sample query here, which is selecting all properties of my document from my container, where the ID equals my ID, and the partition key equals my PK. So for this specific query, where I'm getting one document by its ID and partition key value, there's actually a more efficient way to achieve this, and that is through a point read. You can execute point reads through the, any of the SDKs, and this is an example of what it looks like in the .NET SDK. I'm using read item async to query my document by the ID and the partition key. A point read only uses one RU for a one kilobyte document, and it is guaranteed to have sub single digit millisecond latency. This is really great if you wanna get you know, one document by its ID and partition key, but of course there are many scenarios when we want to retrieve multiple documents or we want other filters other than just ID and PK. So for these scenarios, we definitely do need to use queries. When thinking about optimizing a query, you might think, oh, should I rewrite the query or where should I actually start? One really important place to look is your indexing policy. So Azure Cosmos DB is a database designed for developers. And because of this, we have provided a default indexing policy that actually works really great for most scenarios. So all document properties are indexed by default with a range index. This is really great for queries that have quality filters, range filters, most system functions, and also if you're ordering by one property. But there are many queries that are more complex than this. Maybe there's some combination of these and you can um, optimize further than just beyond the default indexing policy. For this, we can use composite indexes. Composite indexes really increase e efficiency when you're performing operations on multiple fields in a single query. This is really helpful if you have complex filter expressions. So maybe you have an equality filter and also a range filter or if you have an aggregation with some filters, if you have multiple group by properties, so you're grouping by two things, or if you have multiple order by properties, order by needs to be served from an index. So if you wanna order by multiple things, you actually are required to add a composite index, otherwise your query won't run. But even if you just have one order by property and you add a filter or some other operation, a composite index can really help you get better performance. Okay, so what does a composite look like and how do we know when we need one? So let's take this sample query where we're getting the category and the price from our container where the category equals garden and the price is greater than 10. So we have two filters here. We have an equality filter and a range filter. A sample composite index that might help optimize this query looks something like this. It's important to remember with composite indexes, it's essentially a set of property paths where the sequence and the order matters. So here our sequence, we have category first, and then we have price, and the order I have selected as descending for both. Since there's no order by, I could have either ascending or descending here, and the composite index would still work. But it is important to remember the sequence. So if you have a range filter, your range, the property that the range is on needs to appear last in your composite index. Each composite index can actually only optimize one range filter. So what if we have a a really similar query, but this time we want price greater than 10 and we want the date to be above March 1st, 2023. So in this sample query, we actually have two range filters, but not to worry, we can use two composite indexes to serve this query. So queries can use as many composite indexes or a combination of single and composite indexes as possible to really make the most of whatever indexing policy you have defined. Here we have two composite indexes. We have our category price composite index, and we also have category date. And again, this is because each of these composite indexes can only optimize one range filter at a time. So let's take a look at a couple other examples of this, and we'll look at a demo. So now I'm in the Azure portal, and I just wanna show you what this container looks like. So I have one database and two containers. I have my products container, and a products composite container. The data in both of these containers is exactly the same. 
I have a really simple product document with a name, a price, category, description, first available date, and an array of customer ratings. Each customer rating has both a username and a number of stars that the user has rated this product. My product's composite container has the exact same data, but if we take a look at its indexing policy, instead of using the default indexing policy, you can see that I've added a bunch of composite indexes here. And again, the composite indexes are defined exactly how we just looked with the first property and then the second property and an order for each. So let's take a look at a couple queries against both of these containers and see how it performs against the container without composite indexes and against the container with. The first query I'm going to run is getting the average price for all of my products where the category is outdoors. And you can see the average price is about $500 for the outdoor category. If I look at the query stats, my request charge is 320 RUs. And if I scroll down a little bit, we can see where all of this um, where all of the time executing this query was taken up. So you can see here that we spent some time looking at the index and um, you know about 95 milliseconds total. If we execute the exact same query, this time it's our products composite container that does have those composite indexes. And if we just pull up the results a little bit so you can see, the average price still $500, so the data is exactly the same in both of these containers. But this time, if we look at our query stats, it only cost 51 RUs. So that's a lot fewer RUs than the 320 it took for the container with no composite indexes. If we scroll down, we can see where all of the time was spent. So if you remember previously, this was about 94 milliseconds, and now it's only 17. So we're really gaining a lot of performance by using the composite indexes, and we've also gained, uh, reduced the number of RUs. So we'll look at one more query example, and that is with group by. So this sample query is getting a count of new products for every category, and then we're binning on first available of every 30 days. So essentially we're getting the monthly count of new products per category. You can see here, I'm grouping by both category and by that date time bin function to have two group buys. Now, anytime you have two group buys, it's really gonna show a lot of benefits for a composite index. So we saw how long that took on our container with no composite indexes. And we can switch over to our query stats. We see this cost about 38,000 RUs. And the time it took, it took a long time to execute. So we see a pretty big index lookup time, a large document load time, time on the query engine execution, system functions. Um, this took a really long time to execute. So let's see what happens if we execute the exact same query against our second container with the composite index. And you can see right away how much faster this is. So we have all of our results turned back and it only cost us 5,000 RUs. Remember, the previous one cost 38,000, so this is really a big savings here. And if we can scroll down, we see our index lookup time did go up, but our document load time is now zero. So we were actually able to serve this entire query from the index, and we didn't need to load those documents into memory to process them. This is showing you really big savings, and the time for the query engine, system function, all of these times are also reduced. So when you add composite indexes, you can get a lot better performance for many of your queries. All right, let's jump back into slides. And we can take a look at a couple other optimizations that are really common. Let's look at queries that have array contains. So for this sample, we're getting a count of products of uh, products where the address array contains Main Street. And that third argument is true for a partial match. So our whole address isn't Main Street, but the address uh, property will have the street equals Main Street. When we do this, it's not considered a precise predicate because of that partial match. So we can't actually push the aggregate to the index, and we end up needing to load our documents to execute this query. We can actually rewrite this in a really similar way to make a better use of our index and get a lot better performance. So the logic behind the query is the same. What we're getting will be the same, but this is what our new query looks like. We're still getting the count from C, 
But instead of using array contains, we're going to use exists and we're passing in a subquery. In that subquery, we're doing from our address array where address.street equals main street. So the logic is the same, but you can see that it's written slightly differently. So let's actually hop back into the portal and I'll show you an example using our products data set of how much savings you can achieve. All right, so we're back into the Azure portal. I'm gonna switch over here and I'm executing these queries against my products composite, but I could execute these against either container. We're not using the composite indexes for these queries. I'm gonna go ahead and execute the first one. So here we're getting the count and we're gonna name this five star products where our customer ratings array contains this stars equals five. And again, we're passing true, which means it's a partial match. If you remember, our customer ratings also had a username. So we're not fully matching what the customer rating was, but we're just seeing if the array contains you know, five stars somewhere in that array. And you can see we have about 863,000 five-star products. If we look at the query stats, it took 24,000 RUs to execute this query. And we can see the times that it took. So our index lookup time, you know, there was some time to use the index, but our document load time is really big. We spent a lot of time actually loading the documents in memory to execute that array contains and get you the right results. And then there's time spent in other places as well. If we run the equivalent query, query that uses exists, we can see how much more performant this is and we can look at the time spent on the index. So again, right away, you can see this executed much quicker. And our five-star products, the number is still the same. We still have 863,000 five-star products. But this time, our RUs are so much lower. So this only cost 18 RUs compared to 24,000, which is a huge saving in RUs. And if we scroll down, this is where we see the biggest benefits. So if you remember our index lookup time, we had some time in the previous query as well. Our index lookup time actually went down and our document load time is now zero. We didn't have to load a single document to execute this. We could execute the whole thing from the index. And all of the other times to execute also went way down as well. So this is not to say you should never use array contains. There's definitely many valid use cases for array contains and for all of our system functions, but it's really important to look at how your index is being used and think about, is there a way that you can use the index more efficiently? Certain system functions will make better use of the index than others. And it's really important to think about for your business logic, the answer that you're trying to achieve, what is the best way to write the query? So with that, let's take a look at a couple other resources that you can use to continue learning about queries in Cosmos DB. You can visit aka.ms NoSQL Query Get Started to get started with queries and learn a little bit more about how to use them in your workload. If you want to deep dive into composite indexes, visit ak.ms NoSQL Composite Indexes. And lastly, we have a lot of great resources on Azure Cosmos DB Live TV if you're a visual learner. There is a deep dive of this very session content in episode 71 if you want a longer explanation of a lot of these concepts. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Azure Cosmos DB Conf.